Winston. Unloads to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Winston takes off running. Florida State on a roll. Marcus Mario has just gone deep. Mario to go to the end zone. Marcus Mario to the end zone. He with his legs. Well, eight weeks from today, uh, the greatest weekend in sports will begin with the first round of the draft. Our, our draft expert, Mel Kiefer Jr., released the third edition of his mock draft. Here are the highlights. Jameis Winston remains one to the Bucks. Uh, he has Marcus Mariota going to the Jets at six. Biggest change, however, is a wideout, Kevin White, four, Oakland, and Amari Cooper at ten to the Rams. Joining us now is uh, Mel Kiefer. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you in snowy Baltimore? Hey, we're great here in snowy Baltimore. We're probably going to get six to eight inches, maybe more. Hopefully, it's the last hurrah for the winter. We got spring, we got spring training, cactus league, and grapefruit league. And we're dealing with snow. Are you kidding me? Listen, I didn't know you were a meteorologist as well. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> so, listen, let's get back to the mock draft. We know that Jameis Winston had a three day visit in Tampa. Uh, most experts agree with you. He'll end up number one, but let's talk about him playing in the league. Uh, if he is the starter for whatever team he is drafted to, will it be an easy transition to Sundays for him? Uh, Jaws, I don't know if you heard said he had some real flaws, some mechanical flaws in his game, and he wouldn't take him at one. Your take? i got to find a quarterback in the last 50 years that Jaws would take number one. I don't know who. And maybe Andrew Luck. I don't know. Maybe Peyton. I don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I get what Jaws is saying about the long delivery, that baseball pitcher mentality and delivery that he has. But Kerry Collins, look at his delivery when he came out of college out of Penn State. So if like, you look at, at Jameis Winston, he will be fine from a pure football playing standpoint. I just want to make sure he has the ability to do things off the field necessary to be the CEO of your football team based on the issues he had away from the football field at Florida State. We've never had that for a quarterback in the first round. Number one pick overall, let alone that. So I think that's my biggest issue. But I think Tampa Bay, hey, I don't care if you like Winston or you don't like Winston or you like Mariota or you don't. Mariota or Winston have to go. One of those two have to go number one to Tampa Bay. They cannot go any other direction with the way that division is at the quarterback position. Had two Two guys staring you in the face. You can't pass on quarterbacks and take, say, a Leonard Williams. You just can't do it. Oh, wait. Okay, so you said one of those two guys have to go, Marcus Mariota or, or Jameis Winston. Why not Mariota at two? Well, Tennessee, and this is again where okay, you talk to people in the league and say, what do you think they sh they are going to do? And I keep hearing Matt Zach Mettenberger is their guy moving forward, that they feel he has the size, the arm, the year in the league, and they know what he's doing on and off the field. They know those players know by now whether Zach Mettenberger is the right man to be that quarterback, and they're going to roll the dice evidently and go that route, pass on the quarterback, and take arguably the best player in the draft at number two in USC defensive end Leonard Williams, try to help them and get after Andrew Luck try to beat the Colts that way and figure if we have the quarterback and we get the best player, Leonard Williams, then that's a win-win. So uh, I think that seems to be the direction Tennessee is going to go. Mel, you mentioned Winston and his what you believe are potentially off-the-field issues. Why is Tampa Bay so convinced that those won't be problems? You know, you don't know. I, again, Jameis is saying all the right things here uh, right now, that it's all in the past and um, it's going to be different now than Indiana. You don't know because we've never had this happen before with a quarterback come in with this high a grade. People say, well, Ryan Leaf. Though Ryan Leaf didn't have those types of issues coming in. Uh, it was after the fact. So uh, that's kind of revisionist history. But to have this knowledge of not only one issue, but whether you want to say seven, you want to say three or four or five, bottom line is more than one. That is a problem that you have to resolve and reconcile to say it's never going to happen again. It can't happen again. You can't have to worry about your quarterback. There's enough to worry about in the NFL to have to worry about your franchise quarterback that you're giving the big money to. You can't have that. So this is something unique to the draft, unique to this situation, number one overall for a quarterback. Uh, but as I said, if it's not Tampa Bay, somebody's going to take Jameis or Mariota somewhere early. One of the two are going to drop. Six is the Jets. There's a possibility to trade up if you're the Eagles for Mariota for obvious reasons. I've heard maybe Kansas City he could maybe jump up if a quarterback dropped a bit. It's going to be very interesting to see. I don't know who the first quarterback is because that's going to go. That quarterback's going number one, and he'll be finished early that night. But where is the second quarterback? Who is it? And where does that quarterback come off the board? That's going to be the intrigue of day one. I guarantee you, Mel, you made a lot of people in the state of Alabama upset by having Kevin White, the wide receiver of West Virginia. You have him fourth in your mock draft. He had Amari Cooper, the wide receiver from the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Heisman Trophy finalist at number 10. Why are you so much higher on Kevin White than Amari Cooper? 
Freddie, I'm not. I, I have Cooper ahead of Kevin White on my big board and at the wide receiver position. But when you talk to people, this is a mock draft trying to figure out what's going to happen. Everything's trending Kevin White. He had 109 catches during the year. He was a one-year wonder. Remember, he went from 35 catches. Juco transfer coming in from Lackawanna, 35 at West Virginia, then up to 109. But big, but he's only four pounds heavier than Cooper. He's only an inch and a half taller. Cooper actually has bigger hands, better in the three cone, better in the short shuttle, uh, and more productivity over a three year period, but I just hear everything trending to Kevin White to Oakland, and that means Cooper would drop, or White, whoever you want to put in at four, would drop down to, to St. Louis in a projection. I see, though, Kansas City at 18, San Francisco at 15, Cleveland at 12, if that happens, being aggressive and moving up to get that receiver, because those receivers, the third one, Devontae Parker, Louisville, probably won't drop down that far, and those three teams all desperately need help at the wide receiver position. To get Cooper, say, at five, six, seven, eight would be a heck of a pick. Mel, it seems like we get mixed messages when it comes to the combine and the pro day and all the interviews that happen mm -hmm. at both of those places. How much are people over evaluating the combine when it comes to thinking about who they're going to select or who they're not going to select? Yeah, Ray, I always hear, like, who came out of it that you like now? You can't like somebody now based on a combine. You better have liked them going in. And all this is is verify and kind of put an exclamation point at the end of that sentence for that player. If you didn't like a player, didn't have a high enough grade, and he runs great or he tests great, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I wouldn't elevate that player, and I didn't. I, I'd try on my board to stay consistent with that philosophy of not elevating based on a combine for a player you had questions about. So it, it's, a, it's a tough part of the process. It, it kind of uh, clouds the whole situation a bit, as do pro days, as does the medical, as does the interviews. It's not easy. If everybody batted a 1,000, we wouldn't be talking about this. We'd just say, hey, it's a slam dunk. Everybody's going to get it right. Why do 50% of the first rounders not evolve into great players like they're supposed to? Because it's not an exact science. And this is a, a tough part to try to factor in the combine or the senior bowl week to this whole equation, not overreact to it is not easy. Mel, for the teams that need mm -hmm. a quarterback and won't get Winston or Mariota, is there a guy out there that could become a franchise quarterback besides those two? Well, you know, nobody ever thought that Joe Montana would be, Dan Fouts, Tom Brady. You know, Drew Brees, you think of all the quarterbacks that didn't go high based on how they performed as Hall of Fame type quarterbacks. And, and you look at it and you say, okay, is Garrett Grayson from Colorado State? Is a guy like Bryce Petty from Baylor, Brett Hundley, UCLA, will they emerge? I don't know. Right now it looks like they're going to be second-round picks. Can they be franchised? If you get them in a the second round, you hope they can develop into something close to that. And I think right now everything's trending to Garrett Grayson, Colorado State, maybe being the third quarterback off the board, maybe even early second round. Bryce Petty, Baylor, right in that mix as well. And Brett Hundley, maybe now the fifth quarterback coming off the board somewhere, maybe late second, early to mid-third round, which isn't a bad thing. Russell Wilson another third round quarterback, future Hall of Famer. So uh, you know, a lot of quarterbacks went ahead of, of, uh, of Russell Wilson in that draft and he went in the third round and now like I say, he's got a Super Bowl ring. He's a, a definite, I think, future Hall of Famer. Alright, well Brett Huntley, you already know I'm rooting for him, Mel, because he's a Bruin <laughs> and I'm a Bruin as well, so we wish him the best of luck. Thank you so much for joining us. Try to take care and perhaps have some warmth while you're in Baltimore, okay? Maybe ne maybe next week for the warmth. All right. <laughs> take care of you guys. Thank you so much. Well, you just heard Thank Mel you. Piper say that uh, he believes that Marcus Mariota will go six in the draft to the Jets. Where do you all think he'll go? Uh, my fellas will weigh in on Marcus Mariota and where they think he should land right after the break. We'll be right back in just a few moments.